Hi, my name is Ellen and welcome to Mentally Detoured. This episode goes back in time for a very condensed history of mental disorders. I'm dividing these history, the history into three parts and this is part one which will cover ancient civilizations until, the, until around the 16th century. Okay, so not particularly significant for the history episodes, but I am not a mental health professional of any kind. So, ancient civilizations. Throughout history, the overarching theme of mental illness was not so much to figure out a diagnosis, but a cause. And for many civilizations, it came down to some kind of supernatural phenomenon that was a result of immoral behavior of some sort. It would, um, this phenomenon would be like a possession of evil spirits or demons, sorcery or witchcraft. Perhaps it was a punishment by angry gods or God. Um, treatments included exorcisms, prayers, incantations, other mystical rituals, and it might also include more physical nature of treatment, such as beatings, stonings, other kinds of torture, and bloodletting to release demons from the body. The ancient Greeks believed that human bodies contained four humors, yellow bile, black bile, blood, and phlegm, not the kind of phlegm we are familiar with today. And so they believed that these four humors, if they were in balance, a person was healthy, and if they were out of balance, that could cause a person to become ill, mentally or physically. And the way to treat that imbalance was to let humors out, so to speak. They would perform bloodlettings, but they would either cut a person or they would put leeches and have the blood sucked out of them. Not all of it, of course, or they would die. Um, it also included laxatives or things that made people throw up just to purge their body of whatever evil demon was inside. Hippocrates, one of the ancient Greeks, who lived from 470 to 360 BC, began to classify mental disorders, including paranoia, melancholia, ep epilepsy, and mania. Um, other Greeks described these madmen as driven insane by the gods or, or the imbalanced humors, or maybe it was just circumstances. They use such terms as mania, eccentricity, frenzy, or lunacy to describe a mental disorder. Then along in, in the Middle Ages, along came the Persian and Arabic, scholar, Arabic scholars who studied the Greeks and integrated Greek concepts into their own concepts. And they wrote about fear, anxiety, aggression, um, sadness, and obsessions. The treatment for the insane was, at times, humane, but for the most part, it was not. Responsibility for the individuals that were suffering from mental illness was left to the families who would hide them away because, remember this immoral behavior that, they, that must have caused the mental illness? That would reflect on the family, and they could not let it be known that they, were, that they had someone who was mentally ill. They would be locked away in cellars or attics. They would be caged, um, not let outside into society, and tortured, starved, beaten, and other forms of abuse were heaped upon them. Um, this treatment was really a result of the shame and stigma that the immoral behavior would have brought on the family. Some families were not even willing to keep them in their own home, or they were unable to, and they just threw the individual out into the streets to fend for themselves. As long as they kind of kept to themselves and were quiet, not dangerous, they were pretty much left alone, and that might have been the best result for them. Um, if they did become dangerous, then they were often picked up by the police and thrown in jails or dungeons, and once again, they were tortured, caged, chained up, you name it. Interestingly, in the Middle Ages and even earlier, individuals who were experiencing hallucinations 
were often thought to be visionaries having meaningful insights. And these individuals were, were supported by society because they might have some great vision that society would need so to know. I haven't said anything really about asylums because there weren't too many. A few asylums were established earlier than the 16th century, but for the most part, the vast majority of asylums were not established until after this, or right around the 16th century. I will pick up century. with asylums in part two of mental illness through the ages. Let's, let's be informed and not walk blindly down the path of life. Until next time.